in this presentation I'm gonna quickly uh, glimpse over a couple of important system processes in Windows So system idle process, this is not exactly a process. Process Explorer is normally showing this to account for the idle CPU usage or the CPU cycles which are not being used. So in the system right now around 31% is not used for any purpose. System is again the kernel mode part of all the processes so it is the kernel itself system so if you if you look at uh, you can see all the drivers loaded into into this particular process it's all sys files and um, if you look at the load address it is the upper ATB um, in, in 64 bit so it is the kernel address so this is the kernel basically Interrupts are again not a process just for accounting for CPU cycles spent on interrupts. SMSS.exe is responsible for session management. We have not discussed session in detail. Hopefully when we discuss a display we will get into session management. So session is uh, more or less like a display isolation in Windows. So it is done by SMSS, local session manager etc. CSRSS is a very important system process. For example, the raw input thread which reads the mouse and keyboard from the hit devices and populate the message queues of different thread running in a system is running in CSSRSS. So the raw input thread is running in CSSRSS in the context of CSSRSS. A more familiar involvement of CSRSS is the implementation of a printf API in for example Windows 7. So the console a read write is implemented in CSSRSS. CSSRSS is supposed to create a con host etc. That is being changed in Windows 8.1, um, Windows 8 and later. A lot of Win32k.sys or the UI related things happens in the context of CSSRSS. One of the interesting thing about CSSRSS is, is it is a little difficult to load something into CSSRSS as a DLL or to write a hook for CSSRSS without a driver. So that is one of the difference CSSRSS has with any other process which is running in Windows. A win in it, uh, nothing much interesting about it from this uh, discussion standpoint um, it just start up a couple of things in the in the beginning services.exe control all the services services are process which can be run without a user interaction so user don't have to type the username and password in the all control delete screen to run a service. Services start before that. They are normal processes, it's just that they normally don't have a UI. SQL Server is an example. There are a lot of SVC hosts are there with the different operating system functionalities. So all those services are handled in services.exe the start stop all those kind of actions another interesting process is LSAS LSAS handles the security protocol LSAS has the implementation of APIs like a logon user anything which connects to the active directory why a security protocol like Kerberos, NTLM, etc. happens in LSAS.
LSAS is a process in the system which validates a password in a secure way. So LSAS is a process in the system which validates a username and password of Windows in a secure manner. So local security authority subsystem. So it loads security providers like Kerberos, NTLM, etc. Another interesting process in Windows is a WinLogon, which handles a logon and log off, shutdown, etc. It has a bunch of code running inside it, which is handling the profile management, profile loading, etc. WinLogon um, works very closely with another process called Logon UI. So logon UI is not visible right now because uh, only when I press Alt Control Delete, the screen which you see when you press Alt Control Delete, that is owned by logon UI. In the XP days, the Windows XP days, that UI was owned by WinLogon itself, but due to some security reasons, it is moved from a WinLogon to logon UI. Also, there is something called credential provider which loads into the logon UI. So if you have a fingerprint a recognition system instead of a password, you need to have a credential provider for that to be loaded into your logon UI to inject that information for verification. Explorer.exe is the most familiar process probably. So your start menu is coming from explorer.exe. Start menu, all the my computer, uh, all those uh, UI which you see normally in Windows operating system is coming from explorer.exe. It is uh, nothing but the shell of uh, Windows uh, which gives you the basic access to the file system and other functionalities uh, like starting another application etc. So those are the main uh, system processes um, which are on top of my mind right now. Finally I would like to define a system process. My definition for a system process in Windows operating system is in case a Windows API call implementation goes inside a process through LPC ALPC or any such mechanisms that is potentially a system process. For example, a logon user. Logon user will ultimately end up in LSAS for the actual authentication or the verification of the password. So LSAS is a system process. Exit windows. Exit windows have a lot of code in WinLogon. So WinLogon is a system process. Printf has a lot of implementation or console read write has a lot of implementation in CSS RSS. So that is a system process. Get message API has implementation in CSS RSS for populating the message queue by the raw input thread. So CSS RSS is a system process. It is not a well documented definition or anything. I'm just thinking just for my understanding. So that brings us to the summary. In uh, this presentation, we have seen a couple of system processes in Windows and we have gone through the functionalities of some of those processes. Also, we try to understand what is a system process. That's about the presentation. Now, Reviews, comments and suggestions I would like to take from one single location. So if you don't mind, I would like to follow this particular pattern for the reviews and comments. Unfortunately, it is not really useful to me if you update the YouTube comments as YouTube is just one way we publish content. Now if you think you need more personal attention or have some in-depth doubt or need some more training, please feel free to follow these links. Also, please refer someone if you think they can benefit from similar trainings.
all services are available online as well as direct classroom training. So that's it. Thank you for watching. See you next time.